I want to say before this video starts, if you enjoy Smithereens, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, and more power to you. However, this is my opinion, and if you disagree with me, you are not only completely wrong, but you're also dumb as hell. Joji is one of the greatest artists to ever exist. I've loved Joji ever since Filthy Frank, but I was one of the few who realized that he had to move on, and I supported his music career greatly. However, recently, I think I noticed a sharp decline in Joji's quality, and most importantly, his personality in his music, and I really want to talk about it and give my perspective. I only want what's best for Joji, and I'm sure if you're watching this video, you feel the same. So that being said, let's get right into the video. As someone who's been there since Chloe Burbank, the start of Joji's career was absolutely amazing. There was such a uniqueness to his sound that only got better and better with time. Not to mention, the aesthetic for the projects were so interesting and different from everything else at the time. However, soon enough, Joji would take a dark turn, and in my eyes, that started with Nectar. Ooh, yeah, hey, hey. I just want to start this section off by saying, I think Nectar is a good album. However, there is one huge problem with it. I would personally rate Nectar about a 7 out of 10, but if you just did this to the tracklist, it instantly becomes perfect to me. And yes, I know that there are some fan favorites in the songs that I took out, but when you compare those songs to the rest of the songs on Nectar, there's such a leap in quality and in my opinion, most importantly, personality. I mean, at least Ballads 1 was pretty consistent when it came to personality and the quality. I mean, apart from maybe two filler tracks. I also want to point out that this is when Joji started developing his mainstream sound. Don't get me wrong, I love songs like Run and Sanctuary, but when you compare them to Joji's past works, they just feel a little generic. I really started to miss the experimental sound that Joji had. I know the lo-fi stuff isn't for everyone, but Joji actually did it right. I mean, his voice worked with it and the production was amazing. It was safe to say for Joji's next project, Community wanted a larger focus on quality and not quantity, and also maybe a return to some of the older sounds that Joji had in his past. And then boom, two years later, out of nowhere, Joji drops Glimpse of Us. And it's an absolutely beautiful, near perfect sounding song, even though piano ballads aren't really my type and I find them a little generic. Not to mention the edgy, grimy music video that came with Glimpse of Us. It really felt like Joji was stepping away from that mainstream feel that he had on Nectar. It was safe to say, I was hyped. And then some time passed and Yuck on Interlude dropped. It was pretty good, but when he compared it to the tracks that were released before Nectar, it did feel a little lackluster. But considering it was an interlude track, I was still really excited for Smithereens. It also felt like this time, compared to all of Joji's past projects, he didn't just release the best songs off his album before it came out. This is also when the tracklist got revealed, and even though it did upset some people, a lot of us also realized that the main problem with Nectar was the quantity over quality, so it really felt like Smithereens was going to be the exact opposite, which was a major positive. And then Smithereens comes out, and let me just say, that first listen was really, really underwhelming and disappointing for me. It did grow on me with the second and third listen, but after that it almost had the opposite effect. To show you why I dislike this album so much, we're going to look at it on a track by track basis. Welcome. Like I said earlier, I think Glimpse of Us is near perfect. I think it's definitely Joji's strongest opener, however, I do think Piano Ballads are a little generic to me, but I think it's still a really good song. I'm down so we can get up, I've waited too long to get this is actually one of the new songs I kind of liked. However, there are filler songs on Nectar and ballads that just feel better and more complete than this. I will admit the harpsichord on this song really adds a lot to it and it's very catchy. It almost reminds me of In Tongues, which is definitely a very positive thing. However, my main issue with the song is how short it is. I mean, it is criminally short, so much so that it almost feels incomplete. And on a 9-track album, that is near unacceptable in my eyes. Hey guys, Sushi from the future here, and I'm not gonna lie, I completely forgot to review this song, which is kind of ironic because there's a lot of songs on this project that are way more forgettable than this one. Anyway, Die For You is good. I understand why a lot of people love this song. That being said, I think it's also the most overrated song in this album and by a long shot. I think this actually had potential to be like a top tier Joji song, but it just feels like it's missing something. Like it just sounds like it's one idea, done very well, but it just feels like it lacks something. It reminds me a lot of Space Song by uh, Beach House, except for this is just done worse. I don't even think it's necessarily a bad song, it just feels unnecessary for Joji. And now that most of the video is edited, I also want to make clear that I wish I made this point later on in the video, but I'm really harsh on a lot of these songs. And taking a step back from it, I think most of these songs aren't necessarily bad songs. They're bad Joji songs. And what I mean by that is a lot of these songs just feel more lackluster and generic compared to Joji's past works. And honestly, it just feels like a slap in the face to Joji's fans who have been there since Ballads 1 or In Tongues or Chloe Burmank or even Filthy Frank. And that's why I think this album is the most controversial Joji project, because the fans who have been around since like Ballads 1 and In Tongues, they've seen Joji go from this really unique style to this mainstream sound that just isn't that good. And yeah, that's just my extra two cents I'm kind of throwing into this section, so yeah, uh, next song. <laughs> Me, 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 me. 
This track feels like Glimpse of Us, but if Glimpse of Us was uninteresting and boring as hell. The first part of the chorus is really good, but then the second part just ruins it. Joji is amazing vocally, but it just feels like in certain parts of the song he just throws that talent away. Again, it just feels very bland. There's nothing here that stands out that's actually a positive for me. Also, it's the second longest song on the album, but it almost feels short. I don't know what to think about that, but I don't think it's a good sign. Also, that, like, let me in at the end, it, it just sounds completely off. I mean, it sounds incomplete. It sounds like a demo. Like, how did, how did that even make it on the final version of the song? Like, a lot of the songs on this album for me, this just has zero to no replay value for me. The sound of Dissolve is the definition of filler. I think Joji actually has potential in the autotune with songs like Come Through and Ew, but it just doesn't work here. I can't see myself ever re-listening to the song again. Also, my friend pointed this out, but the guitar in the song almost sounds like it belongs on a shitty Oliver Tree song, and that is not a good sign. I guess you could say it's just overall a Dissolve pointment. Night Rider is another song I like. It's actually one of my favorites off of the new tracks that came out. Um, it just feels like something's off with it. It just feels like Joji's trying to go down two different paths on the song. I mean, you have the silly vocal sample, and then you have the pink guy-esque refrain, uh, I'm too precious, which I actually really enjoy. But then the instrumental and the lyrics just go in the complete opposite direction, and it gets all, like, dark and serious. I, I don't, I don't get it. This really reminds me of Pretty Boy, but Pretty Boy was consistent. I mean, the silly yachty verse and the funny background vocals match the, like, all over the place instrumental of the song. That's just not present here. It, it feels like the song is fighting each other, but not in a good way. I mean, overall, it just feels more of like a guilty pleasure for me. Like anyone who really hates this song, I understand why. Like I, I can totally see that viewpoint. I went to this album with really high expectations for this song. I mean, you had the guy who made Pink Eye making a song called Blah 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 Demo. I mean, it has to be good, right? Turns out, this is by far the worst song on the album and possibly one of the worst Joji tracks ever released. I mean, I physically cringed when I heard that shitty Diplo type beat switch part of the song. I mean, it was horrible. How did that even get on the final product? It doesn't shock me that Joji had literally nothing to do with production on the song, because how did they let this through? Surprise Surprisingly enough, the title doesn't lie. This is a demo. It sounds so incomplete. It is insane to me that this song got on the album when leaks like Circle Back and Love Us Again exist. It just doesn't make any sense. There's no quality control at all on this album. I mean, the one like kind of positive thing is it reminds me of like Bitterfuck off In Tongues, but I don't even like Bitterfuck all that much on In Tongues. I think it's probably the worst song on there. And this just sounds like a worse version of that. I mean, at this point in the album, it just feels like half of Pink Guy's entire discography is produced better than this project. I can barely see. I actually like Yuck On. I think it's like an above average Joji song. Um, my only real problem with it is like, why is there an interlude track on, on a nine track album? Um, I think there are other songs on here that would have fit the interlude title better because this sounds more complete than like most of this album. I feel like the man. You know, I actually like this song, um, it has an amazing title, good production, um, my only real complaint is that it's so short that it almost makes it feel incomplete. That and the fact that a freestyle is written by nine people, that is literally insane to me. Like I get it, I know it's not really a freestyle, you know, it's only called that for like the funny effect and you know, it has a ring to it, and I'm fine with that. It's just like nine people for a track that's two minutes long, that is literally insane to me. So what did we get after two years of waiting? Well, we got a nine track album that just feels incomplete and mostly full of filler. And again, there are lots of songs on Nectar that are filler too, but for every song on Nectar that was filler, you had three certified bangers. With Smithereens, it just feels more like filler than actual good high quality songs that have personality to them. And another thing that bothers me about this album is the amount of bullshittery around it. Before the album even came out, there were no teasers or trailers for it. I mean, all we got was a Die For You snippet and a tracklist reveal. Compare that to like Ballads 1 and Nectar, where we got teasers and trailers and it just felt more exciting. Then either when Glimpse of Us or Yuck On came out, they had pre-order merch, which is fine for, you know, an artist, you know, trying to make a little money before the album even comes out, you know, before people can tell if it's good or not. But the thing that really pissed me off about this is if you lived in America, if you wanted to buy a hoodie or a shirt, you had to buy a box set. That is just so scummy to me. If I want to wear a Joji hoodie, should I really be forced to spend an extra $15 to get a box that's going to collect dust in my room and a CD that's never going to get played? It's just so scummy to me. I don't know how consumers are just so fine with this. And then with Yuck On, we got the cover art reveal. And let me just say, this is the most 
uninteresting generic cover art ever, even for like Joji standards. I mean, I mean, at least it matches the album in like an uninteresting way. You can even tell there's like a literal devolution in the album art of like personality. And then his face isn't even on smithereens, gradient with fucking noise thrown over it. And then he had Target selling an exclusive red CD that came with the poster, except it didn't come with the poster. And then with the whole CD thing, you had the issue where every single CD had a typo on it. I mean, that just shows you the amount of disrespect and negligence that went into this entire album. And then it was announced that copies of the CD were being sold with a poster, and to be fair, it actually was a poster this time. Except this was the poster. I mean, what the hell is this? Even the Smithereens cover art would have been better than this. I could literally make a better poster than this in Photoshop in five minutes, and at least it'd have something related to Joji or the new album on it, apart from just like random art. And another thing that really bothered me about the release was the whole Joji community. The amount of copium and meat writing was just through the roof. It's like they accept literally anything this guy puts out. Like, hey, I love the guy too, but you're allowed to criticize things. Come on, guys. So in this part of the video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the counterpoints that the people who will die by this album are making, and we're going to try to dissect them and kind of answer the questions. I actually agree with parts of this argument. For example, 1AM Freestyle, one of the better songs on this album, had nine writers, which is still insane to me because of how short it is. But um, it doesn't make it a bad song by any means. But where this really hurts Joji in my eyes is the production side. I mean, if you want to look at the three worst tracks in Smithereens, all of them had zero production credits for Joji. I mean, if you look at Ballads 1 and In Tongues, you know how many songs had zero production credits for Joji out of those two projects? Literally only two of them off Ballads 1, and at least those people were noticeable names in the industry. I don't even think it's a hot take to say when Joji's on production, the song is way better. Or at the very least, it's when Joji isn't working with, no offense, nobodies. I mean, looking at the credits for Smithereens is just sad. Like, who are these people? I mean, we went from having production credits from Clams Casino to these no names. The only name I even recognize on here is Weathen. And what a shocker, the track that Weathen produces is one of the better songs on the album. I mean, this is a very bizarre and specific take, but this album just feels like it was produced by old white teachers trying to be hip. I mean, listen to the second part of Blah 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 Demo. That just feels horrible. It sounds completely off. It just sounds like they're trying to be hip and it just fails tremendously. That's just my main issue here is Joji had a really distinct and unique style to his sound. And it just feels like these people are taking away from it for a more mainstream approach. What? Okay, I'm not gonna group all of the people who are defending Smithereens as if they supported this argument, but this argument is just so stupid to me. This argument can be used for literally anything. Joji can make an album called Da Shit and just have it be three hours of autotune fart noises. And yes, he's allowed to do that. No one's stopping him from doing that. I mean, maybe 88 Rising, but it's his choice. I'm just giving my opinion, okay? I like the only way this makes sense is in legal terms, and that's definitely not what I'm arguing this in. You're a fucking idiot. This needs to stop. Now. This argument is really stupid to me, and a lot of people think this way, so I think we should talk about it. One of the main reasons so many other people and I were so excited for Smithereens was the fact that there was nine songs after two years. Now, in between Nectar and Ballads, there was also a two-year difference, but Nectar had 20 songs, and obviously there was a lot of quality missing there, but a lot more quantity. So I think it's perfectly reasonable to set your expectations for a Smithereens high when you waited the same amount of time and there's less tracks. That should mean that there's more quality spread out in between those tracks, but that just wasn't the case here. I bring this up in the worst subreddit of all time, r slash uh, Joji or r slash Pink Omega. Just combine them at this point, I don't know why there's two of them. And the response I got was, oh, Kendrick has five year wait cycles in between his albums, two years is not long. I mean, I see the point of view and I understand why you think that way, but this should be based off an artist, not music as a whole. I mean, the thing is Kendrick usually does have five years in between his wait cycles, but all of his albums are like the same quality. Some are better than others, sure, but at least you know what you're getting and you know that it's gonna be quality. Here, we didn't have that. We waited the same amount of time, but we didn't get the quality. I know this is kind of a weird argument to wrap your head around, but I just think it depends on who is the artist, what is their usual cycle between albums, and is that quality there or not compared to previous projects. And for Smithereens, the quality was just not there. Haha, <laughs> you know, words can't hurt me, these shades are Gucci. This one's kind of half true in my eyes, except for the fact that most of the music I listened to in middle and high school, I hate now. And also the memories of me like listening to Joji in like middle and high school aren't necessarily positive. They're actually kind of negative. Like I don't look very highly upon the times I was like sad and listening to Joji in middle school. That was not like a fun moment I want to revisit for me. 
I mean, this argument just kind of feels like a cop-out in my eyes. Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. This one's kind of hard to argue because there's not really any hard, concrete proof around this, but I totally understand the theory behind this relationship. I mean, it perfectly makes sense in my eyes. You know, a small label like 88 wanting to kill the uniqueness sound of Joji in order for him to develop a more mainstream approach to music. I mean, that would definitely explain why Nectar and Smithereens just felt so lackluster personality-wise. 88 Rising just seems really fishy to me at this point. I mean, for example, the merch um, is horrible. <laughs> I don't know about the new era, uh, the Smithereens merch, but I can say for a fact, the Nectar era merch was just horrible, okay? This right here, not good quality. It was overpriced, took forever to ship, and it barely fits me. And it's the correct size. I mean, I have other windbreakers that fit perfectly on me. Most of the people who are defending 88 Rising say, oh, well, Nikki hasn't changed. Nikki's doing perfect fine. I mean, her sales are through the roof. She's doing great. Uh, here's the thing. Nikki never needed to change. She's had a mainstream sound her entire career. And don't get me wrong, I like some of Nikki's music. I think she actually has a kind of unique approach to pop and like mainstream sound. But comparing Nikki to Joji is just comparing apples to oranges. I think this also explains why it feels like Joji's trying so hard to be the weekend in his like newer music. I mean, 777, which is a song I half decently like, depends on the day. It literally just sounds like a Weekend song. And then if you look at some of the songs of Smithereens, I literally like heard the Weekend in my head. It just feels like he's trying to copy him at this point. And if this is the case and 88's pushing Joji towards that more Weekend sound, um, they're stupid because if I wanted to listen to the Weekend, I just listened to the Weekend. Um, Joji has a great unique style. He doesn't need to copy the Weekend to do good. Now this is more of a game theory here, so just stay with me. Another thing that really supports this argument in my eyes is the creation of Yebi Labs. As we talked about earlier, one of the main reasons why I didn't like Nectar and Smithereen so much is because Joji just doesn't produce a lot of the songs on there. Or at least he doesn't produce as often as he did on Ballads 1 or In Tongues. But if you haven't heard of Yebi Labs yet, I don't blame you, there's not very much promotion behind it. But basically, it's Joji's attempt at being a DJ. I mean, doesn't that just tell you that he loves the production side of things? Not only that, but it just feels like he misses his more edgy style. I mean, look at the Yebi Labs logo. Okay, it's not, it's not some, like, pinnacle of graphic design or anything, but it just feels like Joji, you know? Now, here's where the game theory comes in, so I'm sorry if this gets a little wild. Now, I think Joji is either A, creating Nebby Labs as an attempt to escape from 88 Rising, not letting them produce songs, or B, an agreement between Joji and 88 where Joji can branch off and produce in his Yebby Labs career, but 88 Rising wants a more mainstream approach to Joji's songs. I'm sorry if that theory is, like, super confusing or completely far out, um, I'm the one who kind of created this. I haven't seen this posted anywhere else. So, um, yeah, if this ends up being true, Sushi Gold came up with it. But seriously, Smithereens just sounds like a fulfill my contract to get out of my label type album. Honestly, I can make an entire video about 88, so I'm just going to stop here. I just hope in the future, at some point in time, Joji can return to his more older sounding sound that had that personality and that uniqueness and also have that quality there. Because right now, I really miss the old Joji. It's happening! Here we go! Mama! 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 I miss the old Joji, straight from the gold Joji, chop up the soul Joji, set on his goals Joji, I hate the new Joji, the bad mood Joji, the always rude Joji, spazzing the news Joji, I miss the sweet Joji, chop up the beast Joji, I gotta I say, at that time this. I liked to meet Joji, see I like invented Joji, it wasn't any Joji, and now I look and look around and there's so many Jojis, I used to love Joji.